Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video, I will show you how to use the gradient boosting regressor model for a regression problem. So this is the gradient boosting regression model from SQLearn. So in a different video, I show you how to do a linear regression model, how to explain a linear regression model, how to do random forest model for regression problem, how to explain it. And in different video series, I'm going to do the same thing for the classification problems. So this one is for gradient boosting regression model. And if you want more data science content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. With that being said, let's go ahead and import gradient boosting regressor. So we do from sklearn.ensemble. Oh, ensemble. <laughs> okay. Um, import gradient boosting regressor. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know, I like looking at um, documentation. So quickly here, I have the documentation for the sklearn gradient boosting regressor. And it gives you a brief description of how it works. And then it gives you the different parameters that you can work with. And these parameters is what you, you, you will tune when you're doing hyperparameter tuning. And again, that's a different video that I'm working on. When you're doing a hyperparameter tuning, these are the parameters that you will um, fine tune to get a better model if you need to. And then down here, it has the different attributes. And attributes are the things that are available to you in the model after you after fitting the model through your data frame you have access to attributes like feature importances and these other things and then down here it tells you the method that comes with um, this module we have the fit method and then we have the predict method which is basically the things that we need so with that being said Let's go back to the notebook and let's keep working. So first I'm going to instantiate the model. And before you I'm going to set the random state to 42. And basically this random state is just so that I'll get consistent results every time I run this notebook. And the thing is like, you're going to see me work with my X training data, my Y training data, my S test, my Y test. Well, that's because I've already prepared my data frame for that. So you can just get a data of the street and then running through a model. That's not, that's like garbage in garbage out, right? So make sure you take the time to clean up your data and make sure you convert your categorical variables into integers. Basically do what you have to do to get your data ready for the model. If you go to my channel and look for a video um, or a video series called insurance premium project, I basically go from beginning to end how to clean up the data encode your strings into integers into numbers and before we get to the model all right that's if you need to learn how to clean up your data before you put it through your model so let's go ahead and instantiate the model so we are gonna do our y prediction for gradient boosting it's equal to the model dot fit and we want to fit our x train and y train and like i said earlier this is like data i've already prepared for this tutorial and then the next step is to use model for prediction actually i made a mistake this is not where this goes um my bad let me just go ahead and run this again. There we go. And now let's do uh, Y bread GB. That's the prediction. This is the fitting process, not the prediction process. 
and I want to store my predictions in a variable called YPredGB. I can store this in a variable and then use that variable here, but that's not necessary. So I'm going to do GB model dot predict and I'm going to predict using my S test and let's go ahead and run this. And my prediction method is done. So, you know, when you, are, when you create a model, you need to have a way to evaluate the model, right? And for a regression problem, you have to use regression metrics. And for a classification problem, you have to use classification metrics. The different types of problems uses different metrics to evaluate the model. So now that we have done our prediction, we need to evaluate how good this model is. And I'm going to use mean absolute error and mean squared error to evaluate the goodness of this model. And of course, I'm going to compare the result to my Bayes line. And so this is kind of like a sample of our Y predictions. And this dot 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 just means that is is shortening some things. So this is like the first three and this is like the last three on the list on this list. So this is a sample of our prediction and to evaluate our model, I'm going to use a regression matrix. And if you go here to psyche to learn, I might put this link in the description below. You can get an example of regression matrix and example of classification matrix. So let's go ahead and do from sklearn dot matrix import mean absolute error and mean squared error. And now that we've imported that, let's go ahead and, and put it to good use. So let's call it, let's uh, calculate the mean absolute error for our model. And this is going to be mean absolute error. And with mean absolute error, the first thing you provide is a true value. In this case, the true value is the Y test. And then the predicted value is this one. And also we are going to calculate the mean squared error and we are going to start in a variable. So we are going to do mean squared error. Like you don't have to use these two metrics. Like you can choose the metrics that's appropriate for the projects you're working on, but for this tutorial, I'll just use these two metrics. And again, for mean squared error, the first thing you provide is the test value. And the second thing you provide is the first thing you provide is the true values, which is the actual values. And the second thing you provide is the predictive values. Let's go ahead and print our results. And as you can see right here, this is our mean absolute error from our gradient boosting model. And this is the mean squared error from our gradient boosting model. So we can go ahead and compare this to what we got for our linear regression model for our random forest model and from our mean baseline. All right. So as you can see right here, this is the result from the other models. So let's begin with our baseline, right? This is like the error matrix for my baseline. Our baseline is basically a guess, right? So without running our data actually through any model, and we made a prediction, which is basically basically kind of like a guess of what of what the insurance payment is going to be. So this data is basically calculating, trying to predict what insurance premium is going to be for the customer, right? So without making any models, without running through any models, what do we guess our insurance premium will be? So this is the error from our initial guess. And this is kind of what we are going to be using as baseline to compare every other model that we create, okay? And then we went ahead and created a regression model and again, you can search on my channel and find those videos. And here with this regression model, we got an error score, a mean absolute error, mean squared error score that's significantly lower than the baseline. And then I did a random for a random forest regression model and the random forest regression model got even a lower score than the 
linear regression model, which is good, right? So we want a lower error scores. Now we did this for the gradient boosting model. All right, this is just using the default parameters. We're not hyperparameter tuning anything here. This is all using default parameters. So um, the gradient boosting model got a lower got a lower score than the linear regression model. So which means our gradient boosting default model is better than our linear regression model. But the score is higher than the random forest model. So in this situation, our gradient boosting regression model is worst is worse than the random forest regressor model and this is just using the default settings no hyperparameter tunings no fancy thing but our gradient boosting model is still better than our baseline you know so this is kind of like the error metrics for the gradient boost and this is the error metric for everything else we can kind of compare how our models are performing so that's basically it for this video. And of course, you could use any other metric that you want to use. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to use mean absolute error and mean squared error. In the next video, I am going to show you how to explain your gradient boosting model. So if you created your guess, you, you've created your gra gradient boosting model, you have gotten your metrics, your error metrics. And now how do you actually explain the model? How do you know which features in your model contribute to the outcome your model is producing? So in the next video, I'll show you one technique to explain your gradient boosting model. So just go ahead and subscribe to the channel already. And you can find me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website. We are write data science blog posts and more blog posts are coming very, very soon. So stay tuned. And if you go here to my free data science resources, you'll be able to get access to this page. So I create a lot of blog posts and I create a lot of YouTube videos. And as I create content, I also find other resources online. I just find it easy and more straightforward to take all my resources and put it under one page, to put it in one platform. And that's machinelearningeducation.com slash free. So to get access to the notebook that I use in today's tutorial, and any notebook that I use in any of my blog posts or in, in any of my YouTube videos, just go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free. Or even if you go to machinelearningeducation.com, which is the primary website, you just click on free data science resources. You will also be able to get access to this page. And here is where I keep all my data science resources. And sometimes I even publish videos on this platform long before I make it available on YouTube. That's it for this video. If you made it this far in this video and you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you made it this far in this video and you didn't like it, please give it a double thumbs down and subscribe to the channel either way. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.